According to the Torah's tradition, the age of the universe is approximately 6,000 years old, 5,785 to be exact. Science will tell you, around 14 billion years. Can both of these seemingly contradictory claims be true? In this series, we will tackle some of the most controversial issues between Torah and science. Throughout the series, we will be joined by Rabbi Yechiel Krish. This is Faith Meets Fact. The very first words of the Torah, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Ever since then, everyone's been asking, when exactly was this beginning? And the answers differ drastically. So how do we get around this problem? Let's now turn to Rabbi Yechiel Krish, a leading expert on all things science and Torah, to take us through some possible reconciliation. Whenever we're trying to resolve science Torah problems, we really only have four approaches available to us. The first approach is to twist the Torah into a knot and say that whatever it says in the verses should be taken less literally or not literally at all. Now, sometimes that approach might be valid depending on the context, but the problem here is that the word that the Torah is using when it describes, when Hashem describes making the world, is that he created the world in six days, the Hebrew word being yom, that Hashem created the world in six yoms. Now, a yom is usually a 24-hour period. We would have to twist the Torah here for the word yom to mean something beyond a 24-hour period. A thousand years, 10,000 years, a million years, a billion years, and at some point, the word yom loses all meaning. But the real problem with this approach is that later on in the Torah, by the Ten Commandments, when God gives the Ten Commandments at Mount Sinai, he introduces the idea of keeping Shabbat. And Shabbat is supposed to be kept because we are supposed to copy God exactly the way that he did things. According to the Torah, the verse reads, you should keep Shabbat, you should work on six days and rest on the seventh because I worked for six days and rested on the seventh. The word used there is yom once again. So God is saying to us, I want you to copy me exactly. Do exactly what I did. I worked for six 24-hour periods and rested on the seventh 24-hour period. You should do exactly the same thing and work for six 24 hour periods and rest on the seventh. If we are to say that when God made the world, these initial days were longer than 24 hour periods, Shabbat is going to come once every couple billion years. Your cholent is going to get very, very cold. So it's not gonna work. We can't honestly give an approach here that would imply that the Torah doesn't really mean 24 hour periods. Fact is, the Torah seems convinced, textually speaking, that God made the world in six literal days and rested on a seventh literal day. So we're stuck. We're unable to twist the Torah, at least not in an honest way, which brings us to the second approach. The second approach is that we can twist the science. So if we wanted to twist the science to make the Torah science problem here work with the age of the universe, we would have to cast doubt on the scientific findings that are claiming that the world that we are living in right now is a couple billion years old. That's not entirely difficult to do. Even scientists aren't really quite sure exactly how old the world or the universe is. The gold standard of science is prospective research, where we can look at something now and test what it will be doing in the future. Obviously, that sort of research is not possible when you think about a multi billion year old frame of reference. It's very difficult to go back in time for a billion years and see exactly how things played out. In addition to that, the basic science surrounding the age of the universe commits what is known as a logical fallacy within science itself. I'll give an example of this. It's known as the antecedent consequent fallacy. If I have a uh, ice cube on the table in front of me, and I want to make a scientific prediction about what will happen to that ice cube in the next one hour, I can say with fair certainty that that ice cube is going to turn into a puddle of water. And that's good science, because I have something in front of me, I have reason to suspect that it will go in that direction, and so when it turns into a puddle of water, I've confirmed my hypothesis. On the other hand, if I have a puddle of water in front of me, and I want to try to figure out what that puddle of water was before it became a puddle of water, claiming it was an ice cube is somewhat outrageous. There are multiple different ways this puddle of water could have come to be. Similarly, when I take a look at the world around me right now and claim that because of how things look today, that must mean that a certain process played out over the course of billions of years in the past, I am making a logical fallacy that science is usually not comfortable making. It's fair to say that the science behind the age of the universe and the age of the world would not pass muster in a traditional clinical trial or meet any particular standard that we generally set around scientific findings. It's science, but it certainly isn't the best that science has to offer. So is it possible to twist the science? Yeah, it's possible. But once again, not my favorite approach because of how much we rely on science in our daily lives. 
The third approach is to use Kabbalah, or Jewish mysticism, to blast away the problem entirely by understanding verses on a mystical level. Some Jewish scholars throughout the ages have done this, even with the days of creation themselves. One approach is that we actually have been through several versions of this world before, and that the rock we're standing on right now has been through seven different cycles, each one lasting 7,000 years. Now, you might note, those of you who are good at math, that that doesn't get us much closer to four billion, but there is a verse in Psalms that says that one day equals a thousand years in God's eyes. When you do the math that way, you'll end up with seven cycles of 7,000 years and then times 365,000 in order to convert days to God years. That comes out to about 18 billion. That would mean that you would have an 18 billion year old world. There are a few problems with using this Jewish mystical approach. The first is that ever since the Arizal, Rabbi Isaac Luria, in the mid 16th century, codified Kabbalah into a formal system, it is not allowed for any Jewish mystic to go back to prior mystics that contradict him. That's not permitted anymore because he is the bottom line final decision on Jewish mysticism itself. Rabbi Isaac Luria makes it very clear that the entire idea of there being prior worlds before this world is a spiritual thing and not remotely related to the rock that we're standing on right now. That really is the biggest challenge to this approach. And by the way, Kabbalah doesn't really help us all that much even if we were to accept a premise of an 18 billion year old universe because you'll recall that the current estimate of the age of the universe, according to science, is 13.7 billion years. And that may sound similar to 18 billion years, but it's off by more than 4 billion. The fourth approach, my personal favorite, is one that I like to call synthesis. It's the approach that is championed by the Lubavitcher Rebbe, and it allows us to embrace science while also remaining faithful to a more or less literal reading of the Torah. When we look carefully at Genesis, we find that the story is meant to be expedited to a certain degree. We have a tree that is only a few days old that is bearing fruit, the tree of knowledge. We have Adam and Eve, who are only a few hours old, eating from that tree of knowledge on the sixth day of creation. It's very clear that God intends to tell us that things are moving faster than we might have expected. Now, is it possible that God accomplished billions of years of work in just a few 24-hour periods? Absolutely. God can do anything. And as a matter of fact, in Genesis itself, it looks like God is speeding things up. Let me give you an example that illustrates this point. Let's say that I'm going to take a flight from New York to Florida and that that should take about two and a half hours. And now let's say that God decides to get me there a lot faster. God can do miracles, he snaps his holy fingers, and I am transported from New York to Florida in exactly 10 minutes. Now that's miraculous. Does that mean that the distance from New York to Florida changed? Or does that mean that I was able to move a lot faster than the normal amount of time it takes to travel from A to B. The distance is the same. When I go back, if a miracle's not done for me, on the way back, it's going to take two and a half hours to get from Florida back to New York. The distance hasn't changed, but I was able to traverse it more quickly. This means that God, within six 24-hour periods, six literal days, did billions of years of work. He's very, very fast. He's able to expedite things. He's able to do miracles. And therefore, when we look back at the earth, we will see evidence of billions of years having passed, even though God only did them in six days. The reason why this approach works so well with the Torah is because this still allows us to have exactly six days of creation, six 24-hour periods, and a world that is only about 6,000 years old that we're living in right now. Meanwhile, this approach works with science too, because we don't have to reject any of the geological findings that we have had over the past couple years. We don't need to reject radiometric dating. We don't need to reject redshift when it comes to the age of the universe. We can accept that science is observing the physical universe universe, or to put it a slightly different way, science is reporting on what it would take to make a universe like this without God's divine intervention. Without divine intervention, it is quite possible that this rock that we are standing on right now takes 4 billion years to form, and that this universe that we are in takes roughly 14 billion years to form. Torah is willing to accept that. Fact is, that's not how God did it. God tells us himself in his holy Torah that he made the world in six days and rested on the seventh. He accomplished this incredible amount of work, billions of years of work, in just six days. Here, we have no problem between Torah and science. The science we can embrace, the Torah we can trust, and a synthesis occurs between the two. Which one of the four approaches did you like best? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in. If you like what you saw, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, turn on those notifications, and stay tuned for our next episode, where we will be tackling one of the greatest debates in the science world. Is the sun really at the center of our solar system? Or perhaps the earth is the center of it all? Can we prove either way? And what does the Torah have to say about it? Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. This is Faith Meets Fact.